Hey, David Raffoff here, longtime engineer. Uh, one question you need to be able to ask when you're working on software is how do you know you're building the right thing? And sometimes this is obvious if you're just doing things like bug fixes or you know um, addressing common requests or whatever from customers, but um, this ties in really closely to being taken seriously as a uh, professional and also within your team. Um, you need to be able to go into any meeting, whether it's with company stakeholders, or your own team, or uh, you know potential customers or whatever, and know that you're actually building the right thing. Um, because if you're not doing that, all the money and time and everything that's your team spending is uh, just wasted or at least not used effectively. So this is a tip that applies to really anybody involved in the process of building software. So you could be a designer, software engineer, marketer, researcher, product manager, business owner, uh, just anybody really that's involved in the whole, the, the process of delivering software. And, um, you know, something that you'll see pretty uh, commonly when this question comes up is there's two, you know, two or three kind of different main, um, well, maybe four different main paths people will go down. One is that they actually can't answer. They don't have any idea. They're just, they, you know, they're building what they want to build essentially. And that's probably the worst. <laughs> you don't want to be that team or that person. Uh, the the next better one is, you know, maybe I, I'm just going to use a designer as an example, but really this could go for anybody in the team. Uh, you'll see a designer come in and say, hey, I came up with three different um, designs for um, a solution for, you know, something we think a problem we think the customer is experiencing or a thing we think the customer wants. And uh, based on my experience and education and maybe some research, uh, here's, you know, one to three different approaches, but I think this one's the best and this is why, and you know, they'll go through some reasons why um, design wise or, um, you know, user experience wise or whatever they think it's the best. And that's not bad. I mean, that's, um, you know, you still have somebody who's a professional on your team, who's educated, who's, you know, up to date and um, trying to make their, uh, use their best judgment to come up with the right thing to make. And that's uh, totally admirable. Um, and then, you know, the th maybe the third way that you'll see sometimes is essentially that plus they've done some actual research with customers, maybe internally, or they found research somebody's done in the past, and they're kind of tailoring it more to uh, the actual audience of the company and not just design in general for everybody. For I mean, because it's such a broad field, you need to be careful, right? Like um, you could be making products for consumers or products for uh, businesses or a very specific business that be. Uh, operates a very specific way or like a very specific person within that business. Um, so just basing it off any research or anything closer to what the company's actually doing is probably going to get you a little bit closer. Um, but all of these, um, you know, with their range of uh, quality, um, still have a bunch of problems with them. Um, one is that, you know, you're not, um, it's not necessarily informed by like recent recently talking or talking to uh, recent customers really digging in on what problem they're trying to solve um or, or i should say what their you know what their goal is like what they're actually trying to do versus like how they're using your tools um and they also require a team to lean really heavily on one person's expertise so um you know if the designer comes in and says hey i've been working on this for a couple months this is what we're going to do you know, everybody in the team is going to kind of feel um, like their their input hasn't been considered, or at least they don't understand the choices that inform getting to that point. Uh, and especially like a business owner is just going to be like, "What are you talking about? Like, uh, we need to actually talk to our customers and figure out, um, you know, what they need." Or the business owner may actually even have a very strong opinion about um, what's the right thing to do, but they may also have not um, uh, been in, you know they may have not talked to the customers or, uh, recently or tested out, you know, different ideas or whatever. So, uh, anyway, this is kind of getting to my, uh, fourth approach that can be done, which is, um, you know, try to figure out what the goal is that you're, um, aiming for. So usually it's your customer has something they want to do or something they need to do, and you need to actually help them, uh, to achieve that. And, uh, a, a common framework for talking about some of the stuff now is the jobs to be done framework, but essentially a customer has something they want to do and you're trying to help them do it. And you, you may even already have a product that they're trying to use to accomplish that, but your product may or may not be your current product may or may not be the right tool for them. Um, so a good place to really start is just going and talking to customers and find out like why they're using your product, what it is they're trying to do, 
if you don't have a product yet, just figure out like what are their biggest problems that they're trying to address. Um, and by doing that, you can find out a, a number of different things. You can find out um, whether what you have already is like a good fit or how it isn't. And you can figure out like where your competitors are um, uh, helping your customers, serving your customers better than you are. So you can find out like what other tools they're using and why they're using them. Um, and another thing you can see is based on that person's like discipline or uh, seniority or like the type of organization they're in or where they are in their team or how big their team is or all these all these factors that you don't really have any way of knowing until you talk to somebody. Uh, you can you can kind of figure out like what they're trying to do, what their situation is, and then like how you can help them out. Um, and, and you may find that you, after talking to, you know, five or 10 different um, potential customers or customers that, you know, you've got a few different groups of people actually that you're trying to address or like a few different situations or there's always some way to kind of like slice and dice and really like focus in um, and for a solution for a particular situation. So it's just helpful to get that context. And the thing that's great about this is while it while it takes a little bit of time, like it may take you a few days or a week or something to to do this, um, you can come back to the team and you can say, "Hey, here's the actual problem that we're trying to solve for actual customers or potential customers, uh, and this is what they're really trying to do." Versus like, "Here's how um, what we're doing isn't currently working for them," uh, and that can give you a much better uh, starting point. You've done some market research. You know what people want. And uh, I mean, it's going to be a small sample size, right? So it's, uh, but it's just impossible to talk to um, that many people, uh, a huge number of people face to face, but it's better than nothing. Um, and if you want, you could expand it out at that point. You can do like actual research where you do surveys and stuff like that and see, um, you know, if you're hearing the same themes. But, you know, basically you're starting from a point of um, this is what a customer actually wants. And, uh, the interesting thing about that too is so the team can really buy into that and they can start coming up with solution potential solutions together and you could try out you can you know try out a bunch of different experiments um, and you don't have to jump all the way to building the solution like if you've talked to your customers the next step might be um, just listing out the top tasks or something like that and see if um, being able to solve those tasks like resonates with them um, and then you could even move into saying, here's like a paper, like really rough, like hand-drawn prototype, or, uh, even maybe like a digitally done one or a mocked up one or whatever, but something where you don't have to invest a ton of time, uh, up front to just try some ideas out and you can start to see which of those resonate or not. And then once you get kind of get more confidence, you can just kind of keep going higher resolution, you know? So, uh, once, once you see a prototype or once you see, uh, just some design mocks uh, resonate with them. You can move on to maybe doing just like a really rough kind of fake prototype. And you know, if, if you're still getting a strong signal that that's the right thing, that's going to help them out. Uh, then you can actually make the commitment to jump in and kind of like build software and like jump into that, um, that phase, which is much more expensive involves, you know, probably many more people working uh, full time on it. But uh, yeah, the idea is just to kind of validate as you're going through the whole process that you're doing the right thing. And that totally changes the conversation because uh, when you go into a meeting, you know, maybe it's with stakeholders or business owners or whoever, you can always start back, you know, with what the research is and uh, you can kind of show all these steps along the way. And they still may have information that you didn't have or think you're going in the wrong direction and can, you know, talk to you about that and you can course correct or whatever, but at least you have um, some actual like evidence that you're kind of starting with, um, for your, for your decision-making process. And it's, it doesn't come down to, well, this is my professional opinion and this is your professional opinion. And, you know, you can get into all these crazy debates and, uh, arguments and stuff. But, uh, and if you just think about it too, working with a designer, um, I've, I've, you know, worked with a lot of different designers and, um, it's really impressive when a designer comes to you and they don't just say, Hey, here's a design that I like and I made and I think it's the right thing. They come in and they say, Hey, here's a design I started with. And like, I talked to customers about it and got all this feedback and this is what they liked and didn't like. And so this is how I changed it. And I tested it out a few more times. Like that's super compelling and, uh, uh really there's just no substitute for it. So, um, yeah, I, I guess just for disclosure too, like I worked for six years for a company called user testing. So, 
uh, I saw, you know, this is, this was essentially, you know, the business was testing things with users and, and making sure that they were going to work, um, you know, work for the users. Um, and this is kind of the idea of like applying user testing across the full like spectrum of, uh, building software, uh, from, you know, the early research phases, um, you know, market research phases all the way through. Uh, but so, yeah, I just wanted to share, you know, my experience with you about what I've seen work. Um, I've seen teams that don't take this approach really struggle and maybe either get stuck longer than they should or not build the right thing or actually never even um, get around to like building or launching because there's just these, you know, constant um, debates and kind of indecision within a team. So, um, yeah, this is my best advice I can give to you after seeing uh, seeing this tried a bunch of different ways. So, yeah, if uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. And then if you want to be notified, hit that little notification bell. Uh, that'll let you know when new videos come out. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.